Welcome to Studio Fabricana. In this series, we're going to be looking at seam finishes, which will include the French seam, the flat felled seam, the zigzag finish, what I'm calling the press and stitch, the nice pinked edge, and we will end with the Hong Kong finish. In this segment, we're looking at two really beautiful uh, seam finishes. The first one is one that I use a lot, and that's the French seam. I really like the clean finish of this one where all of the seam allowances are bound inside. And you want to make sure when you're doing this one that you're using a nice matching thread. The other method we're going to look at, another one that I really like because it has that same kind of clean finish on both sides, is the flat felled seam. And for this one, you might want to get a little bit more adventurous and choose a nice contrast thread for the top stitching. This method is what's known as a French seam. And for this method, we start with the wrong sides of the fabric together. We're using a lightweight denim to make sure it's obvious to see the right and wrong sides. The right side is the dark side and the light side is the wrong side. So I'm going to line up my raw edges that I'm sewing with the wrong sides together and I'm going to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to start by sewing a quarter inch seam allowance. So I line up my raw edges with my quarter inch marking on my sewing machine. And I'm just going to sew this seam, lining up the raw edges. Just like that. So once we've sewn the seam with the wrong sides together, we've got a quarter inch seam allowance. We're going to cut, we're going to trim the seam allowance to about half the size that it is currently. So it's going to be about an eighth of an inch. Now it doesn't have to be perfect, but you definitely want to get it smaller than it is. It won't show when you're finished. All of this is going to get hidden away. So just do your best to get a nice even cut. And now we've got it down to about an eighth of an inch. At this point, we're going to open up the seam with our, our sewn edge, kind of with the raw edges up. Some people would just finger press this open, but I'm a stickler for pressing. So I'm going to kind of press you can either press it to one side or you can try and press it open, which is a little tricky because our seam allowance is so narrow. But if you can get in there, you can press your seam allowance open. I'm having a bit of a tough time, so I'm just going to press the seam allowance over to one side. You could even turn it over to really make sure that that seam is all the way open to one side. There we are. The next step in sewing your French seam, once you've pressed your seam allowance over, is now you fold your fabric face together, the right sides together, and you kind of want to roll your seam. Now we've pressed it, it becomes very easy, but you want to kind of get your seam right along that edge there. And we're going to go back to our sewing machine. This time we're going to be taking a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, so now I line up that first sewn edge with my 3 eighths of an inch marking on my machine. And here I'm going to do a back stitch because this is going to be my permanent seam and we want that to hold at the ends. So you can just kind of with your fingers and your thumb kind of roll the seam around to make sure that that seam is right on the edge. Again we're continuing with the 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. so often just kind of with your thumb and your fingers roll that seam around to make sure it's nice and flat so there we are 
Now, the reason why this works is most um, commercial patterns use a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So we started with a quarter inch with the wrong sides together, we trimmed it, and then we turned it right sides together and we sewed the, an additional 3 eighths of an inch. So the quarter inch plus 3 eighths is 5 eighths, so that gives us the perfect seam allowance for a commercial pattern. The final thing to do now is because you can't press it open because it's basically all bound inside, you're going to press it to one side. So when you're constructing a garment, you want to think about which way you want your seam allowances to be pressed. Um, a lot of people press all their seam allowances to the back, but I often actually press the seam allowances to the front because you're going to have kind of a ridge. And a lot of times, like let's say this was the side of a skirt or the side of a pair of pants, you want the ridge to kind of be going towards the back of your body, so that means the seam allowance would actually be going to the front of the body. So just think about your finished garment when you're pressing your seam allowances to one side. And I'm just going to give this a quick press on the face to make sure that it's nice and open. There we have our French seam. This method is um, called the flat feld method, and it's very similar to the French seam in that we start with the wrong side spacing. Again, we have this nice, beautiful, lightweight denim. The face, um, the right side, has a dark color, and the other side, the wrong side, it has the lighter color. This time, um, different from the French seam, we're actually going to start by sewing the full 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, not like the quarter inch we did with the French seam. So I'm bringing my fabric to the machine. I'm going to line up my raw edge with my 5 eighths of an inch line. This time I am going to back stitch to start. Continue my seam, lining up my raw edges. If you're more comfortable using pins, please do. Just remove them before you sew over them. Quick back stitch. So that's the first step is sewing a 5 eighths an inch seam. So like our French seam, the next step is actually to trim, but this time we're only going to be trimming one side of our seam allowances. So I'm going to trim the one that's on top, and I'm going to go down to about a quarter inch, so a little bit more than half of the seam allowance is being removed. Again, this doesn't need to be perfect, it's not going to be seen, but do your best to try and keep it even. So there we have our trimmed seam allowance. So now that we've trimmed our seam allowance, the thing we want to do is kind of um, get everything to be laying flat. Some people would just finger press this open, but um, I'm actually always happy to get the iron involved. So I'm going to press that open just so we know we're getting it nice and flat. And then I'm going to press the seam allowance over the trimmed seam allowance. And just to show you on the other side, we want this nice and flat. So that's our press seam. So once we've got our seam allowances pressed, this is the really important operation. We want to take the large seam allowance and wrap it around the little one, kind of covering that raw edge, and then we're going to fold it back over. So be careful, because now I'm going to kind of press this in place. So we just want to roll that raw edge of the longer seam allowance pretty much to where we sewed, okay, and that's going to be
basically enclosing, encasing that short seam allowance that we trimmed. And I'm just gonna continue kind of rolling and pressing and rolling it under and pressing. Again, this time we want to try and keep that the size of the um, the larger seam nice and even because this is going to show on our finished garment. So take your time. I find that pressing it in place makes it much easier to sew afterwards. If you'd like, you can put pins in as well if uh, that would be keep you more confident when you're actually sewing. Just don't forget to remove the pins as you sew. So once we have our seam allowance kind of wrapping the other shorter seam allowance, we want to stitch that larger seam allowance down. Now we want to try and get it really close to the edge. So kind of, you might need to fiddle a little bit. I'm going to put it where I think it's good and I'm going to kind of roll my needle down and see if I'm happy with where it's falling in my fabric. I'm going to move it over a little bit. So once you're happy with your needle position and where you have your fold lined up, you can start sewing. Again, if you're more comfortable having pinned this in place first, that's totally great. So once you've done your sewing close to the fold, you can choose to maybe give it a bit of a press. Um, we've already pressed it, so it won't need much. And I also want to show you what it looks like on the underside. So if this is the inside of your garment, you can see how beautiful it looks. Um, another option is you could do the whole process in reverse. Like a lot of men's shirt sleeves on the underarm, they would actually do right sides together do the same kind of thing where you trim one seam allowance and wrap the other around, but that's all actually happening on the inside of the garment, so the outside of the garment would look more like this, except instead of the wrong side of the fabric, we'd be looking at the right side of the fabric. So um, this is a really good versatile method. You can either do it where your seam is actually happening on the outside, or you could do it where all of the seam allowances are rolled on the inside. The other thing that we want to mention about the flat felt seam, and we mentioned it with the French seam as well, is you really want to think about which direction you're going to be pressing your seam over. Because a lot of times, like I mentioned, you want it to go towards the back of your garment or towards the front of your garment. So keep in mind that the seam allowance that you trim is going to end up getting covered by the other one. So you really want to think about if the seam is going towards the back or towards the front of your garment. And that can be your choice, but you just want to make sure that you're being consistent with that choice.